Today on the inaugural episode of the brand new knitting podcast, OK Knit, hosted by me, I am going to be going in depth and talking about my brand new book coming out, The Sock Project. Um, I'm going to give you details on all 192 <laughs> pages. It's a big book. There's a lot to go over. I've been keeping this a secret for so long. Um, I wrote this in 2022. There's a lot of patterns. I'm so excited to be able to give you a sneak peek of some of the patterns today and talk a little bit more about what's in the book. So we'll be doing that. Um, I'm also going to talk about why January is my favorite month for creativity, even though it's really depressing and ugly outside. <laughs> um, maybe I can change your mindset. I know a lot of you don't love January. I used to not love January either, but I have like a better outlook on it now and it's actually become my favorite month and so I want to talk about why. Um, I'm also going to be doing a book review on a book that I thought was just kind of meh. <laughs> um, it's a really popular book though and I know a lot of you have read it so I really want to discuss and I want to know what you think about this book. Um, finally I'm going to give you a sneak peek of a new pattern that I have coming out next week so all of that and more coming up. Hello and welcome to my brand new podcast, OK Knit. This is the very first episode. I did a podcast several years ago um, and then decided on a whim to move to Maine. <laughs> and uh, I was renovating. There was just a lot going on in 2020. Well, for everyone, um, when I decided to do that podcast. So, you know, I did a few episodes and then things got kind of busy in my life. So I stopped. But now I'm back. It's 2024. Um, last year was kind of a no year for me. I was really burnt out from writing my book, which I'll talk about in a minute. And um, I, it was just, it was just a funny, it was just a weird year. And so I kind of retreated, said no to a lot of things. I didn't publish as many patterns. I just needed to take a step back and have like a hermit year. And it really did wonders. Like I feel very rejuvenated, ready to go, ready to get back into things do more things. I wouldn't say meet more people because <laughs> people make me nervous. I'm an introvert. Um, so it's like I want to meet them, but at the same time, I'm scared. I'm going to be doing a little mini book tour for my book next month and we'll see how that goes. I don't know. I, I feel like it's either going to be amazing and it's really going to bring out the best in me or people are going to be posting on Instagram so I met Summer Lee <laughs> last night and it was really weird. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But anyways, 2024 is my year. I'm ready to kind of like dip my toe back into being a part of the world and being more engaged. And I'm super excited about this new podcast, which I am going to be um, doing every week. And I'm going to be talking about stuff I'm knitting, not just my own patterns, but other people's patterns. Um, I'm going to be talking about obviously like my new patterns and like projects and things I'm working on. And I'm going to be doing book reviews because I read a lot and I know a lot of you do too. And um, I'm also going to be answering your questions. So if you have any questions about knitting, sock knitting in particular, but really knitting, I mean, I've been knitting for 20 years. So um, I'm not like the best knitter, but I have a lot of experience. And if I can't answer your question, I can definitely point you in the direction of someone who could. Um, you can also ask me questions about like life advice, like give me some juicy gossip. <laughs> I love reading about other people's problems. Um, and I, I'm really good at giving advice. My own life is, well, it's not totally a mess because 2023, I said no to everything and I just stayed home and worked on my own problems. So my life is actually in pretty good shape right now, knock on wood. Um, but if you've got problems in your life and if, you know, you want my non-professional <laughs> advice, let me know those too, because that's fun. You can leave them in the comment below or if you prefer an amenity and an anonymous. If you want to do it anonymous, um, then just send me an email. I will have my email, links to my Instagram, links to everything below this video. So um, you can find all the stuff. If you're just like, who is this girl? If you like stumbled across my podcast and you want to know who I am, I am obsessed with knitting socks. And you can find my Instagram, my email, my website, all the links down below. Um, 
a little bit about me if you're new here, if you did kind of stumble across because the algorithm at YouTube thought that you might might like whatever's happening here right now. Uh, my name is Summer. I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I have a husband named Dave. He builds things. He This whole wall behind that you see behind me, um, all of this, he did all of that. He built the little bench back there. So he's, he's like my builder extraordinaire. Um, he builds all the things. And we also have two teenage kids. Um, that's going really well. I was, I've always been scared of teenagers. Um, and I still am a little bit just, um, one, like my teenagers are, are kind of cool. And I feel like the dorky kid again, that I was in high school <laughs> around them. I'm a little afraid of them. Um, but yeah, it's going well. We have two dogs live in Tulsa, loved to knit socks. I designed sock knitting patterns. I've been knitting for, like I said, almost 20 years, and I've been designing sock knitting patterns since 2020. Um, so yeah, if you like this, if you like whatever, whatever this is, you can like this video and you can subscribe to my channel um, for more of this every week. I'll be dropping new videos every Friday. So yeah. Let's get started with this one, though. Um, like I said, I'm going to be talking about my book. But first, let's talk about today's knits. This is not one of my patterns. This is a sweater pattern. I'm going to get up and show you the whole the whole outfit. It's amazing. <laughs> um, all right. So this is the sweater. You can see the detail. It's a Guernsey sweater pattern. It is by Penny Straker. It's a little bit wrinkled. We've got some lint going. But this is probably my favorite sweater. I've ever knit. Um, I love the Guernsey sweater pattern. It's very classic. It's timeless. It's way too big. I actually knit this for my husband, Dave. I'm going to step back and give you, um, we're going to give you the whole show here. You can see I'm wearing it with my athletic shorts, <laughs> which looks amazing. Um, I am the type of person that I will wear athletic shorts. Now I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to smoothly <laughs> roll back into position. Okay, I'm the type of person that I will wear athletic shorts year round. It can be 30 degrees outside. I will have on a sweater, a coat, and my athletic shorts. So um, it's a classic outfit, a beautiful knit sweater with some, some gray $10 shorts. <laughs> Anyways, the pattern is called the States, States Guernsey. That's really hard to say. And it's by Penny Straker. And let me tell you, Penny's not going to hold your hand. This is probably the hardest sweater pattern I've ever knit. Um, I knit it five years ago. I thought I knew a lot more about knitting than I apparently did when I started this patty, this padding, this pattern. Um, Penny's going to give you a page of like wall to wall text and she assumes you know a lot about knitting. Um, and it's kind of awesome. It's very old school. Penny's like, look, you know, I'm going to give you the basics and you just need to figure it out. Um, you know, it's very detailed. I'm not saying that she like left important stuff out, but Penny definitely comes from an era of like old school knitters who were like, you should know this stuff. <laughs> I'm not going to walk you through it. So I had to do a lot of Googling. It really stretched my skills. It stretched my confidence in myself because there was so much I didn't know going into it. Um, yeah, so this is like one of my all time favorite knits just because it made me a better knitter. It's a beautiful sweater. I mean, even though it doesn't fit, it's way too big. I knit it for Dave. It's too big for him. So he doesn't wear it. Um, I wear it all the time because I love it that much. The fit is beautiful. I love the style. So big, big thumbs up to Penny because fantastic sweater. So you can find the details on the sweater below in the video too. If you want to know more about it or check it out, um, it's a great sweater. So that's today's knits that I'm wearing. Now let's get into the thing that I've been waiting to share with people for so long. Um, I was first contacted by Abrams Publishing. Um, an editor named Meredith Clark sent me an email back in like April of 2022 asking if I would be interested in writing a book. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I would be very interested in that. And so that's when the process started, April of 2022. And here we are. I got my box of books. This is it. This is, ta-da. Um, wow, I wish I hadn't made that noise. <laughs> I don't want to stop the video. So it's going to stay in. Um, I got my box of books, of my copies, in December of 2023. And here we are, January 2024. I'm sharing it with you. This is the book. Um, hopefully it's focusing. I can't, 
it's not focusing. There, now we're focused. Um, that's the back. And this is the front. And yeah, it's got 192 pages, um, 25 new patterns. It's divided into sections. I wanted to make it a book that was accessible to beginners. Um, and then I also wanted to make it fun for experienced sock knitters as well. One of the things that I did, and it's something that I wish I would have had when I first started knitting socks, is that there is a whole section in the beginning. I'm flipping through and that's why I'm not looking at you. <laughs> I would have been smart if I would have, uh, you know, put little tabs in here. All right. So this chapter, chapter three, is all about the basic sock. And yeah, it's, there we go. All about the basic sock. And I have recipes for like all these different socks in here. So, you know, you can learn how to knit the heel flap and guess it. The German short row heel, a flegal heel, toe up, cuff down, multiple different ribbing options. So you can kind of like create your perfect basic sock. And it's got recipes for all of it. And I've literally been using this as a reference, like for designing sock patterns. Like now that I have this kind of like all written out in this great place, I'm going back and using it as I design patterns. So that whole section, I mean, it's got it all, like any kind of combination you can think of for basic socks. Um, I then have sections on knitting rib socks, knitting thick socks like DK and worsted, um, stripes, all my tutorials on how to work stripes so that you don't have to knit an in, so you don't have jogs whenever you change colors in the round. Um, my recipe for knitting faded socks, like literally everything. So there, this whole first section, it basically, any any kind of sock you want to knit, whether it's thick, whether it's fingering weight, whether you want a two by two ribbed cuff or a folded over tabbed cuff, whether you want a German short row heel or a heel flap and gusset, afterthought heel, forethought heel, it's all there. I mean, can you tell I'm really excited? I'm just really proud of this because again, it's the thing that I wish I would have had when I first started knitting socks. Um, that's the faded. It's so pretty. I love that. I loved knitting the faded socks. I don't know if that's a trend that's going to go out. Like, I don't care. I, I love knitting faded socks so much. And I can't imagine that I'll ever get tired of that or think that they don't look good. Um, then I have the rest of the book divided into sections by type of socks. So I've got a section just for textured socks, um, a section just for color work socks, cabled socks, lace socks. So everything's divided depending on your mood, you can kind of decide what you want to knit. Um, so that is how the book is, is kind of arranged. Um, and I'll definitely do um, a thing where I turn the camera down and I'm going to flip through it. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to kind of flip through it so that you can kind of flip through it with me and kind of get an even more in-depth look at the book. Okay, now we're back upright again, and I'm gonna share some of the actual physical socks in the book. These are some of my favorite patterns. Um, I'm gonna start with this one. I love this sock so much. Um, this is from the chapter on color work. Um, and I know like some of you might be thinking, I could never knit that. But what's really cool about the way I arranged the book is so in the color work chapter, it starts out with a really easy classic simple color work design. You can kind of get your feet wet, learn color work, figure out your tension, figure out kind of what's going on with knitting color work socks. I have detailed tutorials for it, lots of tips for making sure that your color work socks fit. Um, 
So this is not out of reach. This is the last pattern in the color work chapter. And all the patterns before this are progressively a little easier so that you can start out slow and work your way up to something like this. But this is this is probably one of my favorite patterns in the whole book. I love the colors, love the pattern. It's just, it was so, so much fun to knit. Um, this is another favorite. This is from the texture pattern in the book. Can we get a little closer so you can, oh boy, that looks, there we go. There we go. Um, yeah, get you some of that texture. So this is, yeah, from the texture pattern. It's another favorite. And I love that this one is one that you can just knit over and over again in lots of different colors. It's a really quick, fun, intuitive, easy knit. You don't really have to pay attention to it once you get the stitch pattern down. Um, so yeah, you can just knit this one over and over in different colors for yourself for gift knitting. This is another one of my absolute favorites. I just, I love it so much. Um, the third one is from the cabled section of the book. Um, oh, like, come on, focus. There we go. Focus, focus, focus. It doesn't want to. Let's hold it back here. Okay. Well, that's better. <laughs> so yeah, this is from, um, the cabled section of the book. I'm just holding it like, <laughs> uh, but I also love this one too. It has a really pretty texture panel on the front. The cables are just on the sides. You can knit it tall. You don't have to knit it short. You can modify any of these and knit it how you want, but it is the cutest little shorty sock with that adorable little cable, beautiful texture pattern on the side, um, knit in a really beautiful, lightly speckled yarn. I tend to think that when it comes to speckled yarn, um, cables or like really intricate stitch patterns, I kind of stay away from something that's heavily speckled or variegated because I feel like you go to all this work to put in the cables or the really cool texture pattern, and then you can't see it. It kind of hides. It's just hidden in the variegation of the yarn or if it's really heavily speckled. But a lightly speckled yarn, I think, looks beautiful when done in cables or a stitch pattern. It just really adds a lot to it. So I do do love a lightly speckled yarn, just not like heavily speckled. But with everything in knitting, do what makes you feel good. If you love heavily variegated yarn, if you love a lot of um, speckles, things like that, just knit whatever you want to knit. Like, don't listen to me. What do I know? <laughs> so yeah, do what you want to do. Um, so that's the book. That's the sneak peek of the book. I hope that that gave you more of an idea about what's in it. I'm going to grab it. Grab it again. Yeah, this is it. Um, yeah, I hope that gave you more of an idea of what's included in the book, what you're gonna get if you order it. Um, I'll have more sneak peeks coming up. I'm also gonna be doing some giveaways of autographed copies. Follow me on IG for that. I'll post a lot of giveaway stuff on IG, Instagram, IG, whatever, whatever the kids are calling it, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's the book. Super excited about it. It comes out February 13th from Abrams. You can pre-order it in the link below this video. Um, you can also visit my website to learn more about it. Um, well, not much more. I mean, I basically have all the inform probably less information <laughs> than what I gave you. So watch this video to learn more about it. You can pre-order it on my website or from the link below this video. Now let's get into what we're going to talk about next. And that is my book review of a book that I just thought was okay. <laughs> So let's talk about this book. The book is Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. Um, I resisted buying this book for so long because the premise just didn't sound interesting to me. Like something about a woman falling in love with some guy at like a theater thing in like rural, rural America, some kind of summer stock theater. I just didn't think it sounded interesting or like something that I would like. Um, and I was right. <laughs> I did not find it. I didn't find it interesting. I went ahead and bought it because everyone was talking about it. And I do like this author. It just, this particular book, the premise just wasn't like blowing my dress up. I just didn't think it sounded that good. But I went ahead and bought it, started reading it. And I was like, hey, this is, this is actually pretty great. Um, the writing is stunning. Like Ann Patchett, oh, like it's beautiful writing. And in the beginning of the book, by the way, no spoilers. I promise I'm not going to give any spoilers. I should have mentioned that before, but I'm not going to give any spoilers. So don't worry. But in the beginning of the book, she's a teenage girl. She's kind of figuring out who she is, what she wants to do. 
and the writing is just fantastic. I loved it. I actually was like, man, this just goes to show you should never judge a book by its premise. <laughs> Even if you think the premise sounds stupid, you should buy the book anyways just to expand your horizons and read something different than you ordinarily would. I was just like, I have learned my lesson <laughs> because it started out so good. But then it got to the point where she got to the summer theater that she was performing in and then it just, oh, <laughs> I did not like the summer theater. I just didn't like those parts. But the good news is the book kind of takes place in two time periods, present day, She's a woman in her 50s with three grown daughters living on this like idyllic, beautiful cherry farm in Michigan. And then it kind of goes back to her time in the summer theater um, when she's like in her early 20s. Those parts were a total snooze to me. Did not love them. Did not love reading about theater. I'm from Oklahoma. We don't really have a lot of <laughs> theater here. Maybe that's why I don't. Maybe if I lived in some place like New York or Chicago where they had theater and it was just part of my life growing up, you know, Maybe I would love reading about it, but I, I didn't. I just did not. But the parts where she is a cherry farmer in her 50s with three grown daughters during the pandemic, oh, I loved that. It was so beautifully written. And the story was so interesting to me. I would read an entire book about a woman cherry farmer in her 50s during the pandemic. That part was absolutely fascinating. Loved it. Um, so yeah, so the book was half good. Like I loved those parts. I just thought that the theater parts were kind of a snooze and I'm not like, if you're a theater person, please do not think that I am dogging theater people. <laughs> I was one. I performed in theater in high school. Um, I don't, I just don't want to read about it, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, so the book was three out of five stars for me because the writing was beautiful and I did love the present day parts and the beginning was so strong. Um, it was just, you know, the main premise <laughs> of the book that I didn't love. So, Ann Patchett, Tom Lake, I've got the link to this, um, in the description of the video, if you want to check it out. And if you disagree, agree, let me know in the comments. I'll be curious to hear. All right. So now let's talk about January very briefly, um, and why it's my favorite month for creativity. The fall is just chaos, right? Like we've got Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. We have to see people. There are things going on at our kids' schools. We have to buy gifts. It's like this, just this total pressure cooker that just builds from like October onward. And then by the time Christmas is over, I just feel completely dead inside <laughs> from all the family obligations, the gift buying, that it's just so much. So when January gets here, it's so quiet. Um, you can just retreat indoors. You don't have to go out for anything and you can just kind of turn inward and focus on yourself, your own creativity. You can kind of think about the year ahead. Like, who am I now? Who do I want to be a year from now? Um, I don't really do resolutions. I think you can change your life any day. I said this on Instagram. There is no day that you can't wake up and say, I need or want things to be different. I do, however, think there's kind of like a magic about the month of January because it is a new year. There's that feeling of freshness. Again, that feeling of I can just slow down and be quiet now. The holidays are over. It's all over. <laughs> I can just, just be and kind of think about where I want to go this year, like what I want to do. Um, it's really ugly outside, no doubt. Oklahoma is just a brown, sorry, my nose itched. Um, Oklahoma is a brown wasteland in January. We don't have mountains. We don't have an ocean. We just have a lot of dead trees <laughs> and that can be hard, but I've taken to kind of looking out my window. And when I see the dead trees, instead of just being like, oh, <laughs> this is the worst. I think about the fact that those trees are sleeping. Um, and this is going to sound so cheesy. I tend to anthropomorphize everything but i do i kind of think of the trees as being in this deep restful slumber the grass all of the plants they're all sleeping very deeply and getting the rest they need for the upcoming busy season of growth and so i feel compassion for them instead of just oh <laughs> anyways that's kind of helped my outlook when i look out the window and it's so dreary um and yeah, just viewing January as a reset time. Here's my time where I can reset, look at what's working, look at what isn't and go from there. And so that's why January has become my favorite month. I don't have any expectations on myself. I don't have any place I need to be, places I need to go, people I have to see. It's just me 
in my little home, burrowing in and just reflecting and thinking about the past year and then where I want to go this year. So that is my advertisement <laughs> for January and why you should love it too. If this month is hard for you because it's kind of dreary and the holidays are over, just think of it that way. This is, this is the time to slow down and think and no one's like pulling at you. You don't have all these obligations. It's not as expensive as December and that's always a good thing. So anyways, that's my advertisement for January. Now let's get on to the final thing I'm going to talk about today, the sneak peek of my pattern next week. And you've already seen it. I was wearing it in the intro to this video. Um, and it's not a, <laughs> there we go. Get this right. I don't have my, there we go. Okay. Okay. It is not a sock pattern. As you can see, it is a hat pattern. And this is it. This one, I, I've knit so many of these. So this is like the third one I knit. It's a DK hat pattern. It is actually based off one of my most popular sock patterns. And in the comments below, you can guess and tell me which sock pattern you think it's based off of. Um, but anyways, it's a DK, DK weight pattern. It has two different cuff options. This is the uh, single brim. It also has a folded brim option. Um, and yeah, like I said, I've knit like a bunch of these because it's so, it's such a quick knit and it's so fun to knit. I'm just sitting here <laughs> petting my own hair. Just get my hands down so I stop doing that. Um, anyways, it is. It's a great hat. I love it. And I will be talking more about it next week. The pattern will be coming out next week. So follow me on Instagram and I'll be sharing more pictures and more details about this particular hat pattern. And when we meet again next week, we'll talk in more detail about it. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got for today. Um, hopefully this this went okay. Um, it wasn't too scary. I feel like I, I can do this this time. So thank you for tuning in to my first episode of the OK Knit podcast. Again, my name is Summer. You can find me on Instagram, my website, all of that in the description below the video. Please send in any questions you have about sock knitting or your own life. <laughs> send me juicy gossip we can talk about, whatever. Um, all of that you can find below in the description to this video. I hope you have a great weekend and a great week ahead, and I will see you next Friday.